Good day. Welcome to the booth of the Financial Services Commission. The Financial Services Commission was established to regulate three main industries, securities, insurance, and pensions. In the case of pensions, we, are, we would be the supervisor, and for all the sectors, we do what's known as fit and proper tests. Now, one of the critical things that the Financial Services Commission does is promote integrity in the Jamaican financial sector. In addition to that, we want consumers to think before they invest. We want them to check out the investment advisors that are asking them to invest. We want them to check out the instruments that are put to them. In both cases, these should be registered with the Financial Services Commission. What are some of the things that we do? We hand out these brochures, and these brochures guide you on investment. For instance, we advise you to check to find out if the company or dealer or investment advisor is licensed by the Financial Services Commission. We encourage you to get a second opinion before signing any contracts. Additionally, we we encourage you to ask for the company's audited and unaudited financial statements so you know the state that the company is in, the financial state of the company. And of course, find out what investments you're buying and seek guidance from a licensed dealer and advisor. If you'd like the Financial Services Commission to participate in any conference that you have or you'd like a representative to come and speak at your function. You can always get in touch with the Financial Services Commission. You can send an email to inquiry at fscjamaica.org. You can call the FSC. You can visit our website. We have a very aggressive financial education program. We want to educate our consumers. We are committed to financial literacy and additionally, we are committed to the government's strategy of financial inclusion. But for there to be financial inclusion, you have to have financial literacy. So we are pushing our public education strategy. We are going into the communities, whether it, is, it be, as in this case, we are here today at the MSME Caribbean Conference at the Hilton Resort in Montego Bay, St. James, and we, our strategy and objective here is to speak with representatives of the small business sector. We want them to be particularly mindful of the need for pension retirement planning. That is a critical platform of our public education strategy for persons to start as early as possible to plan for retirement, get involved in a registered retirement scheme, and make sure that at the end of your working life, when you choose at that time, hopefully you can choose it, that you will be in a position to retire and not be a charge on either your family or the government. So plan for your retirement. When we speak about financial inclusion, we are talking about ensuring that the country leaves no citizen behind. Not just the persons who are well served, but there are a lot of underserved persons. For instance, you might have the rafters on Martha Bray or the rafters on the Rio Grande. You can have the farmers. These persons may not be getting the insurance coverage that they need. For, their, for instance, crop insurance would be a form of microinsurance. Insurance for the raft itself would be a form of microinsurance. So what is being looked at now are the different products that can be developed in order to serve those persons who may not be on a fixed salary, getting a monthly salary from which you can do deductions every month for an insurance policy. So microinsurance tends to look at that, um, that category of persons who are underserved and who don't fall into the regular, say, monthly pay. They may be monthly pay, but some of them are not. So you have to cater the product in order to get them. And the payments of the, of the um, premiums may have to be structured quarterly or may have to be structured semi-annually in order, so in order to 
take into account the um, funds that come in to those persons who are underserved. When we look a little closer at microinsurance, some of the things that come to light would be, for instance, how payments are collected. Persons may be situated in remote regions. They may, ha they may be accessing that payment system by way of mobile banking. These are the different platforms that come into play when you're looking at things like micropension, microinsurance. So financial inclusion, covers all of these things and again as we said we don't want to leave any citizen behind no matter what your status in life whether you're semi-employed employed, employed um, doing operating a little shop operating a very small business micro business medium-sized business there is a role for you in the financial inclusion strategy Yo, I've been no outfit,